Hi friends, I'm Rainy. Welcome back to my channel. And today I want to talk to you about Carney's House Party. Um, this is a companion in the Deep Valley series by Maud Hart Lovelace. It's a companion to the Betsy Tacey uh, series that we've been reading for a read-along uh, read for the year of 2019. And uh, as everybody's been saying, I was a little bit hesitant about um, reading a book set in Deep Valley that was not focused around Betsy, Tacey, and Tib. But I will say that I ended up really, really enjoying this one. And, um, and I didn't feel the loss of Betsy, Tacey, and Tib, mainly because, and here's a spoiler, this, this video is gonna be full of spoilers, just so you know. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna get that out there right off the bat. Um, but Betsy comes back to Deep Valley and so does Joe in this one. And this one is set before Betsy and Joe get married. And actually, I believe it's before, yes, it's definitely before Betsy even goes out into the great world. So it's during Betsy and Joe's first um, first romance um, before Betsy screws it up at university. This video is going to be a little bit centered around a defense of Sam. <laughs> um, I've watched a couple of the uh, Carney's House Party videos that people have done and everybody seems to prefer Larry to Sam. I, on the other hand, prefer Sam to Larry. <laughs> <laughs> and not not like in a big way. I I enjoyed Larry. I thought he was a perfectly fine guy. But um, in the end, I think that um, Sam was just better suited for Carney. And it's kind of the opposites attract kind of a thing to me. Um, Carney is very practical. She likes to analyze things. She likes to think everything through before she does it. And Sam is very, very free spirited. He does not think about anything. If he wants to buy something, he's rich. He'll just put it, put it on the books. He says a lot. And that drives Carney crazy because she has always been taught that you need to always have cash, always pay for things up front. You never put anything on credit um which honestly that's kind of my style so i kind of related to carney i am somebody who always has cash on me and i know that in this day and age that is crazy talk <laughs> like nobody ever has cash anymore and it drives me insane <laughs> but um but so i kind of feel for carney um i am not somebody who thinks that you should put off paying for things um but so anyway, I digress. <laughs> but, and then there's been a lot of talk about how Sam was rude. And he was, there were times when Sam could be rude. He was very moody. And Larry uh, was definitely a very even keel kind of guy. He was just sort of along for the ride. Um, he just kind of came in expecting to, uh, to have what he's always expected to have. Um, they, he and Carney had been corresponding for four years while he was out in California. And during the Carney's house party, he surprises her by coming for a visit. And I think both of them, um, I mean, it was quite obvious that both of them just assumed that they were going to get back into a relationship just the same as it had been four years ago, and they were going to be happy and in love, and they would get married by the end of his trip, or at least engaged by the end of his trip. But Sam threw a wrench in that because I think Carney just was, she was just happy with thinking that she knew how her life was going to turn out. She's a very stable character. She likes to know what's going on in, and have, she kept saying, I'd like to have things settled. And so I think she was putting sort of this idealistic pressure on 
her relationship with Larry and and he the same. They had written each other letters for four years, which in ex in itself is romantic. And um, they, I think they both came into this surprise visit thinking that they would feel the love that they felt for each other before he left. And um, un unfortunately for Larry, <laughs> uh, Carney found herself not feeling that way. And she was very confused about Sam. Uh, she didn't, I don't think that she really knew that she was in love with him for most of the book um, because she kept kind of referring to his slob, slobby appearance and you know how he had had a little extra weight on and was kind of untidy um, as being something she didn't like. And it wasn't until he tidied himself up that she started to look at him a little differently. Um, but she still, she didn't like his no money approach to life. She um, just, just kind of thought he was careless. And, but I think too, kind of in the back of her head, she was, she was intrigued by him, if nothing else. And the thing that I want to defend Sam about is that he, because of his kind of overconfidence, um, he was able to be himself and to kind of go after what he wanted. Um, and he pursued uh, Carney right from the beginning. Like Carney didn't really understand that and she didn't, she was kind of naive to that fact that that's what he was doing. But I think the outsider could see that that Sam was pursuing her right from the start. And Larry really didn't. Larry came in and just kind of expected that he knew what was going to happen and that he didn't have to try. He really did. If you look back at, at the things that Larry did, he really didn't try. He was just along for the party. <laughs> and it wasn't until the end when I think he realized what Sam's designs were that he he kind of tried a little harder, but it still wasn't to that point. <laughs> um, and I don't know about other girls, but I feel like I want to be pursued. I don't want a guy just coming in and thinking that, you know, we're just going to end up together. I feel like that's kind of how Carney got uh, with Sam is that she, even without realizing it, she thought, wow, this guy actually gets me. He's, he's, um, he's telling me what he sees as what I want for my life. And he's right. You know, he would talk to her about like how she would, she would play music for her, for her husband. And he he just put out this idyllic scene that was was Carney's ambition. She wanted to be a wife and a mother. She didn't want to be like Betsy wanted to be a writer. Uh, Carney didn't want that. She wanted a home life, which I think is totally great. That's kind of what I wanted for my life, um, and so I feel that that is a totally admirable thing. I think that providing a safe, healthy home for your family is just as much providing for your family as anybody that goes out into the workforce and brings home money. Um, that's just my thought on it. So I really could uh, relate to Carney on that personal level. Um, and I could, I could see where she liked Sam. And I did think that it was at least really romantic when Sam first kissed her because he was worried about her. Uh, he let her go out onto the running boards of his car and hold a flashlight and she fell off of his car, his moving car. So he kissed her when he found out she was okay. And I think that is perfectly fine. Like she was, she was offended by it. And I mean, I get that that, that was a different time and, uh, you know, that maybe would have been offensive to somebody who, you know, wasn't dating that guy, you know, as far as she thought. 
Um, but, but I totally get Sam's side of it too. Uh, now later he also kisses her a few more times after she tells him that she didn't like that. That I had a little bit more of a problem with, of course, but, um, but again, it worked out fine for her. So I, I'm not really like it, you know, that upset about it, but, um, I mean, I, I would not personally have liked the way that Sam asked her to marry him in the end, but, but again, I felt like it was, it was lighthearted. Um, I didn't, I didn't think too much about that he told her to get married. Like, Carney seemed to me throughout the book, like she had enough of a uh, self-awareness that if that's not really what she wanted, she would have told him no. Um, so I think maybe the way that he went about it was a little like, meh. But uh, I think, you know, obviously she really did want that. And after he kissed her again, she probably realized that, yeah, okay, he's he's a little weird, but that's what I like about him, <laughs> you know. Um, and also in defense of Sam, for all his kind of rudeness and and gruffness and moodiness in this kind of second half of the book, I really liked how he treated Carney's brothers. Um, especially his relationship with Bobby, the youngest one, was really sweet. And Carney saw that, and I think that was a big part of why her feelings for Sam started to change. Larry, while he wasn't rude to her brothers or, you know, her family in any way, he didn't really try hard. And again, I think he was just in a comfortable spot with them. He wasn't trying. He just assumed things that he shouldn't have assumed. And, um, but Sam really has a general, genuine affection for the kids. And I think being that uh, Carney's aspirations in life are to be a mother, that really, you know, proved to Carney what a good guy Sam really was. He's a little unpolished, of course, a little untidy, but he is a good, solid guy that would do anything for his family and for the family of the woman that he loves. So that is my analysis of Sam and Carney in Carney's house party. Um, so in defense of Sam. So I hope that you are having a great day. If you have been joining us in the Betsy Tacey read along, I would love to hear your thoughts on Carney's house party and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye friends.